As I do some chores, let's talk about why I don't have bison yet and a little update on what's going on in our life. So for those who don't know, way back in February, I put out a poll asking people what we should raise, whether it was sheep, cows, or bison, and everybody picked bison. So we decided we were gonna be bison ranchers, and the first step on that was to go visit some bison ranches and learn as much as we could. Back in June, we had the opportunity to visit the Hightail Ranch in Montana, and it was an incredible experience. I got to see bison up close, learn about fencing, uh, the management of the animals, what they need to graze. And I felt really excited about starting bison, but at the same time, I was super nervous because actually getting to see them up close and learning some of the stories about him getting mauled by bison and how dangerous they are, it was like a mixed bag of emotions. But at the same time, I was fully ready to just dive in. So the next thing I needed to do was find land. Quick sidebar, what I'm planting here is an overwintering cover crop blend. We've got oats, peas, some vetch, clover. This is gonna help with our soil health. A cover crop isn't something that you actually harvest. It's just something that I'm growing in the off season to help with water retention, erosion. This is stuff that I planted, uh, I think about 10 days ago. It's already come up. We'll end up terminating this in the spring. So it's just something to keep the ground covered in the winter time. All right, so back to getting the land. Where we live in this county, there's so many cornfields. It's a lot of crop ground. There's hardly any pasture where we're at. But there is some options and I was really blessed because one of the options that we have is actually some friends of ours that live just three miles down the road and they had cattle but then ended up selling their cattle and we're looking for something to do. So I thought it was going to be a great opportunity to maybe rent the land from them and I talked to this friend about it and he's also had an interest in raising bison for years as well. So I thought maybe there would be an opportunity to go into some like partnership. So we talked about that in July. We had a meeting and we're like, there's basically three options. I could either rent the land from him or he could say no. And the third option was we go in on this together. And we had a really good talk. It was kind of like, let's see what we think about doing a potential partnership. And then a lot of crazy things happen in his life. I mean, they've had one bad thing happen after another. And on top of that, harvest just started for them and they're building a house. So I haven't wanted to talk about it and add a lot of extra stress to their life. It's really the last thing that they need to think about. So from the land standpoint, we're just kind of at a standstill. There is another option. I could go to the Nature Conservancy, which lives or lives. They have land just right north of our house. But I would much rather work with somebody if that's a potential option than try to go through a nonprofit like the Nature Conservancy. There's some definite pros to working with the Nature Conservancy um, because they're just a half mile north of the road. They're really convenient being super close. And their big mission is restoring like natural native prairie. I know that they rent that out to people to graze cattle. I don't see why they wouldn't want to graze bison because what's more natural than having bison out there. But the downside is I would be doing it alone. And there's a lot of upside to working with a partner, especially when it comes to me traveling, having somebody else that can be there just to check on water and make sure that they're doing fine, check fences. So having a partner, if that is an option, I would rather wait for that um, and make sure that's not actually going to happen before I move forward with talking to the Nature Conservancy. Which means as far as land goes and the whole bison venture, it's kind of at a standstill and that might be an okay thing because of the other change that's taken place in our life. Before I get to that, this is our glass gem corn. It is my favorite corn to grow. It's a Native American heirloom corn. And what I'm doing is harvesting the seeds. Because this is an heirloom seed, it's non-GMO, it's not like a hybrid or anything, um, we can actually save these seeds. So I'm gonna preserve these so that we can plant all of ours next year. Let me see if I can find these. I, like, I just love, I love this corn so much. It's so unique. Every cob that you open is like its own little treasure. But anyway, that's what we're doing with these seeds. Some of you may be surprised to hear that we don't actually own the Shiloh farm here. We have five acres that we're homesteading, but it's all owned by my parents. Actually, this is a good opportunity to show you. Cornfield, bean field, cornfield. It's crop ground pretty much as far as the eye can see. Not a lot of pasture opportunities out here in our county of Nebraska. But anyway, we don't own the Shiloh farm. My parents back in 2016, um had some inheritance money that they needed to do something with i had just lost my house and i had one year left of school so they decided to buy this place and rent it to me so sierra and i got married and the plan was eventually we'd move and i mean after i think it was like 2019 we decided where are we going to move to like we want to live in the country this place is perfect let's just decide to buy this 
So we started saving up money for a down payment. That was kind of the plan was eventually to buy it. Then obviously the housing market was kind of crazy. But two years ago, we were like, let's, let's just go ahead and buy it. And that happened to be the same time that I wanted to quit my job and do social media full time. So right as everything was kind of happening, right at the, the end of 2022, I went to the banks to get a loan and they're like, oh yeah, if you're quitting your job and doing social media full time, like self-employed, we can't give you a loan. Come back to us in two years. And that was the answer I got pretty much everywhere was they need to see at least two years of financial documents to show that I'm not a failure as a social media influencer. So here we are coming up in December will be two years. So the plan was always sometime next year that we were going to go ahead and buy this property. And my parents came to me a couple of weeks ago and they're like, hey, we actually had some life things come up as well. All positive, not the negative, positive things. And they're like, we could use that money. So can you buy this property? Like we got to get this thing rolling, which isn't that big of a deal, but it definitely puts a time crunch on us where it's like, oh my goodness, this is, this is real. Like we are going to be buying the Shiloh farm and it's a lot of money pressure, you know? I don't know if you've ever looked at the price of buying a farm and we're not even like a huge big farm that you're thinking of, you know, only five acres, but sometimes the acreages themselves can be more expensive because everybody wants to get out of the city these days, but it's our home, right? We've done everything, pretty much everything here you see is something that we've done. So we've invested a lot into this property and we feel like it is our home. So it's worth, I'm not, I'm not trying to complain, right? This is a blessing that we have um, everything. Like, I'm so proud of this fact. All those raised beds, the greenhouses, all of it. This was all, you know, sweat equity that we put into this place. So we're really excited to purchase it, but there is one kind of major downside, and that is that the house itself is super small. We don't even have, Sierra and I don't even have a bedroom. We, it, I won't explain our situation, but we don't have a lot of room. So in addition to buying the house, we need to put in an addition. So we have to build a room for ourselves and for our kids somewhere along here. So on top of buying the house, we got to look at building onto the addition, just a lot of financial commitments. And I think that's one of the reasons that maybe not getting bison right away this fall is going to be a good thing. To add a whole nother layer to that, even though social media is going great, I mean, you guys, the sponsors, everyone's been fantastic, the support that we've received. So things are going well. There is some uncertainty in regards to a certain clock app and whether or not it's going to get banned. And if that does take place, it's going to happen in January. So, you know, great timing, which is one of the reasons that I'm trying to put a little more emphasis on YouTube, put a little more time and effort into it. So I really am grateful for everybody that's watched this video in particular and those that have subscribed. You guys are helping me build another financial outlet and hopefully an opportunity like a backup in case things on the clock app go totally south and I just bought a house with no financial security. <laughs> I will say I'm having a ton of fun creating long form content and it feels like the community building aspect of YouTube is so much better than the other platforms. So I'm enjoying my time here quite nicely. Well, that's pretty much it on the bison ranching update. Still really excited to do it. Uh, just might be a year or two and that's okay. I said that I wanted to do it by the time I'm 30 and I'm only 28. So we technically still have two years left. Although I will turn 29 in April, which means technically I only have a year and a half left. So if anyone wants to buy me a bison for my birthday, that'd be great. I just realized I didn't even talk about the cost. Basically each bison is gonna be like 2,500 to 3,000. Uh, we want eight to start off with. So we're looking at like 20 grand for the herd itself. For the land, uh, probably another couple thousand dollars. Fence, we were figuring, I did get a couple quotes, about 12 grand to do the fence for the amount of land and animals that we want to have. So all in cost by the time you end up like trailer, vets and all that stuff, we were looking at about 40 grand and I don't have that just sitting around in the bank. So we're gonna have to take out a loan on top of the house thing, but it is what it is. We'll get there eventually. That's going to do it for the Bison Ranch Farm update, but I do have a question for y'all before I leave. I am going to be in Indianapolis October 22nd through the 26th for the National FFA Convention. Detroit sometime in November for Ford. Uh, the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas the second week in December. And then the second to last week in December, I'm going to New York City for a cousin's wedding. The only city I've been to is New York City, so... What advice, what travel tips do you guys have for those places? Because I've never been and would love to hear your feedback. That'll do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.